Hi everybody, my name is Jason. I am with the Yahoo and the Tour channel and I thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with me. We're going to be doing a reading out of Yah's scriptures and the reading is a an amazing one because this is something that I've read at least 103 books over and over and over before. And out of all of Yah's scriptures, which is available at yahscriptures.com, out of all the books that I've, I've read, one of the ones that stands out more than a lot of the other ones is called the Book of the Nazarene or the Book of Khalidi. And it's a, another time, it's another place in the time of our Messiah where he was walking with people who were recording the things that he would say and how he would say it. And I find this book very, very fascinating. And I don't want to go through it very fast. I want to go through it and discuss things as I see them because I can't read this book enough. When And it, it just brings a, a tremendous amount of wisdom, brings a lot of clarity. And so let us begin our journey with the part one of many, many parts of this reading that you and I will do together as a little family right here. So <clears throat> here we are. The birth of Yahushua the Nazarite. Now, before we even begin, a lot of you guys may have no idea who, what you're looking at with this name Yahushua. And what you're looking at is you're, you're looking at a Hebrew version of the name of our Messiah, the, his Hebrew name, before they changed it throughout the years to where we don't even know what the name of our Messiah is. It is Yahushua. And so when we're talking about Yahushua, we're talking about those of you guys who know him as Jesus the Christ. But there were no J's in Hebrew. The letter J was not invented until the, the 1500s. And so there, uh, if you're looking for the only name under heaven by which men may be saved, then we need to look closer to the origins of his Hebrew name, which is Yahushua. Okay, continuing on, the birth of Yahushua the Nazarite, who became our Adonai, which is his master an interpreter of Elohim and the Torah, a worthy vessel for the greatest manifestation of the power of the Ruach HaKodesh seen on earth occurred in this manner. Now, I want to go back into the, just this one verse because there's so much into this one verse. It's, it talks about our Messiah who became our master and he also became the interpreter of Elohim and the Torah. Two very, very important things, because when we're reading this, this book of Nazarene, we learn a tremendous more about the Torah and about the walk that we have, that we should be having with the Torah, based upon the son of the creator of the universe. Now, <clears throat> this is when it, we're talking the Ruach HaKodesh, this is the, the proper translation for Holy Spirit. And this is what the power of our creator is, is the Ruach HaKodesh. So continuing on, it says that this is the story of who we know as Jesus the Christ, Yahushua Hamashiach, who became our master and our interpreter of this. This is his story occurring in this manner. About the time Yochanan the forerunner commenced teaching the way of the wilderness beside Yardin, in the year before Herodes died, when Augustus Kaiser ruled the Roman world, a babe was born. The father was Yosef, son of Heli, a carpenter of Galil, and the mother, Miriam, his wife, who had been a virgin, pledged to Yahuwah and the Hayeko by her father Shimon, son of Joachim, son of Nathan, son of Eliezer. Now, let us talk about the name of our creator, because there's a lot of you who would know him as God. And that is simply a, a title. It is something like Mr. There's a lot of gods, lowercase, lowercase g's, but there's only one uppercase g that we call as, as our, what you would call God, but that's not his name. We've been, it's been taken out. And so his name is Yahuwah and it's yad Hev, wav Hev, or vav Hev, how, how you look at it, but that's the name. And when we're talking about the Hayeko, we're talking about a temple. And so the, this entire verse right here, we're talking about those who know him as John the Baptist, right? And there was a, a, there's an entire book 
with John the Baptist talking about his his his, his forerunning, um, talking about what he did. But when we're talking about Herodotus, we're we're talking about Herod, we're talking about Kaiser Augustus um, Caesar, who you guys know him as, in in various translations. These are the proper translations of this. And so what this just did is just just gave us a a little bit about John the Baptist, who we know of him as. And um, going into three, it says this. A decree had gone out that all who claimed kinship within the house of Dawid should be gathered for enrollment at the city of Dawid, called Beth Lehem, Lechem, in Galil. Therefore, Yosef, being rightfully born into the stock of Dawid, took the scroll of his parentage and went to Beth Lechem so his kinship could be established. And this, this corresponds completely with the book of Matthew when it talks about David, uh, or not David, excuse me, Joseph and Mary, um, who is right here, Miriam, um, when they are, um, they're called to account for their family and they all go to Bethlehem. And we all know that story from the, the, the actual scriptures that we have. Now, this is a lot, this is not different, but this tells us a lot of different things. Four, Miriam again is Mary. Now, Miriam, being then heavy with child, longed in her heart to be among her kinsmen. And she prevailed upon Yosef to take her, for Bethlehem was only a day's journey from them. The two, with a servant, came to Bethlehem at eventide, but because so many had gathered, the inns were filled. Then as Miriam's time was close upon her after the journey, a man took pity on her and provided a cave used as a stable. There the travelers found shelter and rest. So this gives us a little different insight because all we know as I guess Christians is, is the story of Christmas, how it, our Messiah was born in a manger. This tells us a little different story. This, this tells that, that he was actually in a cave in a manger, in a stable, um, inside of a, 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 pl a place of this nature. And so it, it basically tells us there maybe possibly outside of the city just slightly. Five, that night Miriam's labors came up on her and she suffered the pangs of childbirth and cried out in pain. Nearby some shepherds were tending sheep. For in the midst of so many strangers, there needed protection. And hearing her cry, went to help. They provided a shepherd's basket, which was filled with straw, and placed it in the manger. And the newborn babe was wrapped in the clothes brought for him. So this gives us a little bit different, right? This tells us some things that we don't hear in the regular scriptures. Um, it just it gives us a lot more info into this entire endeavor of Messiah being born. After eight days had elapsed, the child was named Yeshua, meaning one who delivers. For a messenger of Yahuwah had appeared to Yosef in a dream, saying, That which lies within Miriam, your wife, is filled with the power of the Ruach HaKodesh and will respond to the hopes of men. Later men called him Yahushua, and because he fulfilled their hopes and was anointed with the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, he became acknowledged as Hamashiach. Now, in Yah's scriptures, we don't have outside stuff into this. And sorry about that real quick. In Yah's scriptures, we don't have stuff outside of this. But what we have right here is we have things in brackets. And the brackets in parentheses as well, or italics, is stuff that was, we don't, we don't know where it came from. Things that were not originally in the text. And so we, um, this, we'll go over it. Because it, 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 we should discuss this. So let's continue on with eight in brackets. Now the stable was against a hill. Behind an inn were sages from the east were staying. Men of Sastera, wise in the books of the Shemaim and of Nimrod, who carried the stake of fire. So Joseph sent for them, requesting they come and foretell the child's future, for such was the custom. So as you can see, this is why it is in brackets. Because we don't have anything in here. We, we know inside of Torah that the people that do things like the, the, the um, fortune tellers and things of that nature, those are, are, are not good. Those are not things that they would be doing, which is why this is a very strange, um, strange uh, verse within this. So let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater because as, as odd as that is, there, there's always stuff to this. And so let's continue on with this. One of the sages said, It is strange indeed, for this child is born under no usual star, but under one that is, that is a star in appearance only and not in nature, having a power not in other stars. He is destined for greatness and will motivate events touching the lives of all men. 
When word of this was passed around, there was much excitement among those belonging to the house of Dawid, and many remembering the Nebuah of Yochanan, for they had passed this way, wondered in their hearts, Is this not he for whom we wait? The consolation of the Yahudim and the deliverer of men. This displeased the people of Bethlehem, who awaited another deliverer. So, there's a the thing about Messiah being born is the prophets and all the, the the prophets who are the Nebium, right? That is what this version has. Everyone was really, really excited for the deliverer. Everybody has been waiting for the deliverer. Everybody, um, it's a thing of excitement, right? Within the within the um the world of the kingdom, and for all of us who are trying to find that kingdom road. Having a Messiah, having a leader, having the one being born is very, very exciting because the people have been looking for this deliverer for so many years. And so there was a lot of excitement. There was a, a, a ginormous star. There were things out, out, of, uh, out of different, you know, the different uh, things in the environment. There was an excitement with this. And so this is a, a very important time for, for all of us. 11. <clears throat> When the sages spoke of the matter at their journey's end in Jerusalem, and word came of the excitement among those of the house of Dawid and Beth Lechem, there was great consternation among the Kohenim and learned men. They tried to discover where the babe was, but the sages answered deviously and said, His star points towards the east. An elder of the house of Dawid, attending the Baraka, the blessing of the child on the eighth day, lifted up his voice and declared, Surely this is he who has been promised to redeem us out of the hands of evil. This is he upon whom the power of the Ruach HaKodesh will descend, bestowing strength, compassion, and wisdom. Surely he will rule in the reign of Elohim. When the sovereign heard about these things and that a babe had been born, who many claimed was destined to be the deliverer, he was greatly disturbed and summoned the council. With the council were learned scribes and elders who disputed among themselves concerning the babe. Some said that while Yahuwah's anointed would be born in Bethlehem, the deliverer would not, for the birth of Yahuwah's anointed in that place had been foretold by the Nebium. Others said it might not be more than an enlightener who was expected to be born at that time. However, when many agreed that Yahuwah's anointed and the deliverer might be the same person, the sovereign sent three men to discover the child. The dispute before the council had been long, and Yosef had been forewarned, so that when the men sent by Herodas came to Bethlehem, Yosef had departed with his family. They went to search. They went to the place where the kinsmen of Miriam lived. The men who came did not search long for Yahushua, for after the council had been dismissed, Herodas slew the son who sat with him on the throne as he had slain others of his blood. Later, Herodas died himself. But after these happenings, the Romans did not bestow the title of sovereign on any Yahudi, and it was unlawful for any man to claim the title. In this manner, <clears throat> the Nebua was fulfilled, and which is Nebua is a, is a prophet, a prophecy. In this manner, the Nebua has, was fulfilled, which said a virgin shall give birth to a son, naming him Elohim with us. He will be the bearer of knowledge, discriminating between good and evil. But before this is given to the people, the land will lose its sovereigns. When time had passed, Yosef and Miriam came to Jerusalem and stayed at the house of a relative, a man strongly set against wrongdoing and well learned in the Torah. The forty days having been accomplished for the purification of Miriam, she came to the high echo, and Yosef offered the, pres the prescribed sacrifice and dedicated the child. Hearing from Yosef and Miriam the things with the sa which the sages had foretold about the child Yahushua, the devout man took the babe into his arms and praised Yahuwah in this manner. Because the things foretold have come about, your servant is prepared to depart in Shalom. For my eyes have been gladdened by the deliver of my people, a beacon light for others in the glorifier of your name. He will teach all men the ways of Yahuwah and how to walk in his paths. So swords shall be made into plowshares and spears into bill hooks, and shalom will reign over men. Yosef and Miriam could not understand the meaning of this and asked what was meant. Whereupon the man replied, I hold a sapling which will grow into a sturdy tree, under the shade of which many nations will find shalom. Yet he will also test the strength of our people, tearing them apart in dispute. He comes as a separator, dividing the sheep from the goats, showing each his rightful place. He will place a sword in the hands of the weak and strengthen them, and the Belial will be smitten. 
After complying with the requirements of the Torah of the Kohenim, Yosef and Miriam returned with the infant to their home in Galil, a small place in the hollow at the foot of a hillside. There the child grew up, developing a strong body and keen mind, for he was strangely talented. He was wise beyond his years and deft with his hands, and when old enough, he began learning the craft of plow making. His parents, following the custom, went each year to Jerusalem for the Festival of Deliverance. And that is, um, I think, the Festival of Deliverance. Um, it's seven days. Um, I believe this is either Sukkot or this is either Passover. So one of these two is what we are talking about. Um, I don't know which one it is. I'm sure someone out there does. <clears throat> and when Yahushua was 12, they went as usual but this time taking with him, taking, taking him with them. Having remained the seven days of, of the festival, festival, Joseph and Miriam set off to return home, but let the boy linger in Jerusalem, for a kinsman of theirs was also returning, and they thought Yahushua was, was in his company. Now this gives us a lot more detail on the, the understanding that we all have in, in regular scriptures is somehow we thought maybe Joseph and Miriam were like, uh, derelict parents. Somehow they left Yahushua somewhere. Um, we we didn't realize that there were kinsmen. So we, we they they believed that there were other people with them, and so they they didn't realize that they were leaving their 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 children there. So continuing on, having gone a day's journey and finding Yahushua was not with his kinsmen, they became perturbed, and at first light in the morning returned to Jerusalem. It was some time before they found Yahushua in a small outside room of the Hayekel sitting before an instructor of the Torah of the Kohenim. His parents were astonished at finding him accepted among learned men, and the teacher expressed amazement at the child's love of learning. But Miriam scolded the boy for his inconsideration, saying, We have suffered much during the search for you. Yahushua replied, Why search for me elsewhere, knowing I must concern myself with the work of my father? This saying disturbed the instructor. Neither could his parents understand the meaning of the reply, but they took the boy away with them. Henceforth, he always obeyed his parents, but Miriam kept these things in the storehouse of her heart. As Yahushua grew up, his intelligence increased, and he was well-liked by all, but he was a solitary child given much to wandering. So with that, that will take us to the end of the very first chapter. Now, some of these chapters in this book are absolutely huge, 60 verses or more. And there's a tremendous amount of wisdom that all of us can gather and all of us can glean from this book. And the inspiration, the amazing stuff doesn't actually begin until a couple chapters into this when literally every couple of verses is something to very much dwell on. Something that can very much change our life or change our outlook on how the Torah is supposed to operate, how we are supposed to operate under the Torah. The Torah is the first five books of scriptures, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And we are told from page one to all the way to the end of Revelations that we need to be observing these. We need to be keeping them. We need to be writing them up on our hearts, on our minds, on our souls, on the doorposts of our house, on the frontlets of our eyes. It's supposed to be what we talk about when we rise up and when we go to bed. It's supposed to be everything in our lives. And that is what our Messiah Yahushua came, and that is what he told everyone we should do. He said he doesn't come in his own name. He came in the name of his Father. He said he's not doing his own will, but he's doing the will of his Father. And he says, if you love me, you will keep my commands. And my commands, when he's talking about them, he's talking about two. Two of the greatest that everyone goes to. The greatest is to love our Creator with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our strength. And the second is to love our neighbor as ourself. And if we understand those and we really truly love our creator with all our heart, mind, and soul, then we will love what he says and his ways and his laws, statutes, and commandments because they are good for all time. They are a blessing to those who keep them and they are a curse to those who don't. Much love to you guys. I'll see you in the next section.